my dad used to always say to me, do you think I'm made of money? Turn off the lights. Do you think money grows on trees? Turn the heat down. If you're cold, put on a sweater. You call that music? Turn that down. Turn it off. We're not lost. No, we're not there yet. Don't make me stop this car. I will turn this car around right now. What part of no don't you understand? I'm not just talking to hear my own voice. I'll tell you why. Because I said so, that's why. You call that a haircut? What keeps those jeans from falling off? Tuck in your shirt. Wipe your feet. Get your elbows off the table. The early bird gets the worm. You want something to do? I'll give you something to do. When I grew up, I had a job on a farm at 13. Oh, as long as you live under my roof. Stop crying or I'll give you something to cry about. I brought you into this world. I can take you out of it. How's the job search going? Don't touch my car. My first car only had three wheels. What is this, a pigsty? Go make your bet. I walked 10 miles to school. Through 10 feet of snow. Up heels both ways. In my day, when I was your age, I had three jobs. This is going to hurt me a lot more than it's going to hurt you. Do you need anything? Are you sure you don't need anything? You can be whatever it is you want to be. As long as you tried your hardest, that's what really matters. You'll get it next time. You did your best. That's my boy. That's my girl. I'm proud of you. Real proud of you, son. I'm so proud of you. You'll always be my little girl. Thanks, Dad. Thank you, Dad. Thank you so much. I love you, Daddy. I love you, Dad. Daddy, I love you. I love you, Dad. Well, a lot of mixed memories, aren't there? If you turn over your bulletin, you'll find an outline on the back why we all need a father. A little girl once said to her mother, Mommy, if Santa Claus brings our presents, and God gives us our daily bread, and Uncle Sam gives us Social Security, why do we keep Daddy around? <laughs> now, now there's a question that begs answering. Then there's a story, of course, about the children who begged their parents for a hamster. And after the usual fervent vows that they alone would care for it, they got one. They named it Danny. Two months later, when mom found herself responsible for cleaning and feeding the creature, she located a prospective new home for it. To her surprise, the children took the news of Danny's imminent departure quite well. Though one of them remarked, he's been around here a long time, we'll miss him. Yes, mom replied, but he's too much work for one person, and since I'm that one person, I say he goes. Another child offered, well, maybe if he wouldn't eat so much, it wouldn't be so messy, we could keep him. But mom was firm. It's time to take Danny to his new home now, she insisted. Go and get his cage. With one voice and in tearful outrage, the children shouted, Danny, we thought you said daddy. <laughs> Someone has said that a father is a man who carries photographs where his money used to be. <laughs> then there's the ideal father who won a toy in a raffle and called his kids together to ask which one should get it. He asked, who's the most obedient? Who never talks back to mother? Who does everything she says? Just then, five small voices answered in unison. You, pl you play with it, daddy. <laughs> Now, it's kind of interesting how a father's image changes as the children grow older. Four years old, my daddy can do anything. Seven years, my dad knows a lot, a whole lot. Eight years, my father does not quite know everything. Twelve years, oh well, naturally dad doesn't know that much. 14 years. Dad, he's too old-fashioned. 21 years. Oh, the old man, he's way out of touch. 25 years. Poor dad, he's way behind the times. 30 years. I wonder what dad thinks about it. 
35 years before we decide let's get dad's opinion. 50 years. I wonder what dad would have done about it. 60 years. There wasn't much my dad didn't know. 65 years. I wish I could talk it over with dad. Boy, do I miss him. Isn't it interesting how our opinion changes as we get a little older? Now, sadly, we are in America today. We have a major problem with absence of fathers. In fact, Various studies conducted by Yale, John Hopkins, and other groups have documented that the absence of a father is a stronger factor than poverty in contributing to juvenile delinquency. In 48 cultures around the world, crime rates were highest among adults whose children had been raised solely by women. Lack of closeness with parents was the common factor in hypertension, coronary heart disease, malignant tumors, mental illness, and suicide. A study of 39 teenage girls suffering from anorexia nervosa showed that 36 of them had one common denominator, lack of closeness with their fathers. An emotionally or physically absent father contributes to a child's low motivation for achievement, inability to defer immediate gratification for later re rewards, low self-esteem, susceptibility to group influence and juvenile delinquency, and again, the stats speak for themselves. Fathers are important in the lives of the children, and they need to be there not just physically, but emotionally as well. And just because some fathers have abdicated their roles, it doesn't mean they're obsolete. And we need to say something else up front. When we say fathers, we're not referring solely to biological fathers. We're also speaking of stepdads as well, because over 50% of all marriages in the U.S., involve a remarriage of one or both parties. One of three Americans, 80 million people, is either a step-parent, step-child, or step-sibling. One out of five children under the age of 18 is a step-child, and by now step-families involving one spouse who has children and complex families in which both spouses have children are the majority. Now this is that much more the reason why we all need God the Father. And here's where so many people get it all back to front. See, people say, you talk about God being Father, you should have met my dad. He was a user. He was a tyrant. He was a molester. Don't talk to me about fathers. If God is a father, I don't want to know him. And see, here's the problem. God is not just like a father. He is Father. The Father. And the Bible shows God to be the model of fatherhood upon which all other fathers are judged. If you want to know what a true father is, don't look at your earthly father or my earthly father or any other earthly father, however good they may appear to be. Open the word of God and see the heart of the father revealed in the nature of God because he's the model. He is the one who is faithful, true, just, merciful, compassionate, slow to anger, loving, affectionate, providing, patient, kind, and on and on the list goes. And so what I want to do with you this morning is share with you why we all need a father. We all need a father like God who will do these things for us. We all need a father like God who will, first of all, love us with an unconditional love. We all need a father like God who will love us with an unconditional love. 1 John 4.19 says, We love because God first loved us. Romans 5.8 says, But God showed his great love for us in this way. Christ died for us while we were still sinners. And then John 3.16 and 17 says, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Now, let me explain what that means when I say that we need a father who will love us with an unconditional love. Here's what that means. 
That means that there's nothing that you can do to make this father love you any more. You can't. He's not impressed by how many times you come to church in a year. You don't get brownie points for that, say, or stars, or how much money you give him, or how many good deeds you do. There's nothing. And I realize this goes against the grain of natural human reasoning, say, because we think that we can kind of somehow impress God and make him like us more. No. There's nothing that you can do to make him love you anymore. And on the flip side of the coin, there's nothing you can do to make him love you any less. See, that's what unconditional love is, isn't it? 